There's news, obviously, that Man United have signed Casemiro, the um, midfielder from Real Madrid, the one who's responsible for winning five, uh, you know, Champions League titles at Real Madrid during his tenure there. Right, a really classy, a really um, strong, a really aggressive, a really um, solid defensive midfielder. But again, he's coming from Real Madrid. He's coming from playing with two of the best midfielders in the world, in Tony Cruz and Luka Modric, and essentially being told to do one job and screen the back line line wide the two guys in front of him do all the magic he can obviously contribute but for the most part he just screens the back line so for him to come to go to that team to come into United midfield containing McTominay Bruno Fernandes is going to be a completely different uh, kettle of fish so I'm not as excited as some people are out there about his signing of and then the other thing to also keep in note is the fact that he's a 30 year old and we're essentially paying up to 70 million for him and we have by all accounts doubled his wages and the issue I would have with this is that Real Madrid is a team usually usually Real Madrid is a team when they let go of players, it's usually because they're on a decline. Think about the recent people they've let go, right? Like high profile players, um, like the likes of Isco. Um, who else? The likes of Ronaldo prior to that. Um, even Di Maria before he left there. Like they usually let go of players when they've kind of deduced that they've kind of squeezed as much juice out of them as possible. You rarely, if ever, you know, you're rarely going to see a scenario where a team's going to come in and buy Vinicius Jr. off of Real Madrid now unless they think internally that he suffered too many injuries, that he's not as fast as he was before or something. But it's rare now that you're going to see them at this point in time let go of somebody like Vinicius Jr. It's not going to happen. So the fact that they let go of Casemiro because the deal was probably too good to turn down because no one else in world football is ever going to offer Casemiro 70 million no one's ever going to offer Madrid 70 million for Casemiro plus give him 300 grand a week it's just not going to happen so we're the only mugs that are going to do it because we're in dire straits so does he improve this Man United team of course is he better than Scott McTominay of course is he better than Fred probably is he better than majority of our midfield yes of course especially when it comes to honours and trophies and mentality and the things he's won blah 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 blah, blah. but in terms of where we want to go going forward, it just a, is a bit of a weird signing to make, especially to go from Adrian Rabio to Casemiro. It just means that we're kind of panicking now. There is no kind of sense in what we're doing. The Frankie Young deal was, to me, always a bit of a stretch goal. It wasn't something that was always kind of nailed on, even though Eric Ten Hag and Frankie De Jong have a prior relationship. I just felt, it, considering it's Barcelona, considering how difficult they are to deal with in the transfer market in general, considering what they're going through in terms of transfers and the stuff they're going through in the league in general, it just always seemed like, to me, a bit of a stretch. It never seemed something that was always going to be nailed on. So the fact that the club never really had other options that they were exploring at the same time and have kind of put all their baskets in the Franky de Jong thing until the very last minute because it looks like we're not going to sign anybody else after we sign, you know, Casemiro. I think any fan out there who that's legitimately thinking we're going to sign Casemiro and Franky de Jong is probably smoking that good crack. But I just feel like it does smell of Glazers essentially trying to inoculate themselves from hate, trying to inoculate themselves from any sort of criticism from United um, fans by signing somebody who generally people feel like is a world-class player from a world-class team because generally for some fans out there who are quite simple-minded the fact that we're even in business with Real Madrid means that we're legit do you know what I mean it kind of gives them this false impression that we're back where we should be which obviously isn't the case so for me I feel like signing a 30-year-old Casemiro on 300 bags per week is definitely a move that I didn't want to see especially under girls ownership because it means that we're going to be you know left with a player who essentially is going to occupy the mod the um, What's his name? Uh, where I forget his name for the Matic role. He's probably going to be a player that we're going to be struggling to get rid of later on down the line when his legs go and stuff. So it kind of puts us in another predicament that we probably don't need to put in again. But maybe you know the world market out there for defensive midfielders isn't what it is and maybe the club assessed that why would they, what would they rather do spend 50 million on some kid that's unproven who's 20 or spend 60 million on somebody who's proven and can get the job done within the next two or three years and so, and basically ensure that we you know qualify for Champions League football this season next season and the season after that I don't really know but either way um, I'm not that enthusiastic about it obviously in terms of football in terms of what we're going to watch on the pitch it's going to be better to see a better player playing but again I think him coming into this team him coming into the Premier League is no um, confirmation there's no guarantee he's going to hit the floor running the Premier League is a completely different kettle of fish especially this season it seems like the teams outside of the top four are really going for it they're going to be taking a lot of points off of the quote the, 
the the you know quote unquote top four sides. Um, I have a feeling we're gonna find we're gonna have a very weird winner of the league this season. So don't be surprised if Tottenham end up winning the league or something mad like that. It's gonna be a very topsy turvy season, and the Premier League generally is one of the toughest leagues in the world anyway. So it's not gonna be easy for somebody who plays for one of the best teams in the world. The guy that turned you know Roman turned up to Celta Vigo, and they essentially just lie down, right? I go to Ibar and they lie down, but there is no such such thing in the English Premier League. Every every week there's no lie down games. Even in the Carabao Cup, the teams really go for it. So I'm not really that infused about the signing. I would have preferred to have seen someone younger. I would have preferred to have seen maybe more people come in, more bodies for that kind of money. But you know, the club's gonna do what the club's gonna do. And again, until the Glazers go, all this stuff is mute anyway. It's just them papering over the claps and it, it papering over the gaps. It's just them putting a bandage on a gun wound essentially. But they still need to go they still need to go so Glazers out forever um, until they leave and all these signings just on you know are just things to appease fans on social media